What kind of questions we get? Did we get any good ones? We got a lot of good questions. All right. A ton of, ton of good questions. Almost too many good questions that we don't have enough time to answer them all. So some will spill into next week. If you want to hit us up, message us at NBA mailbag at gmail.com. NBA questions, not NBA questions, life questions. Doesn't matter. Hit us there. NBA mailbag at gmail.com. Let's start out with a question about the Minnesota Timberwolves from Michael, from Mike. He said, there's a lot of talk about a town's trade being the only best option for a new roster construction. Is there another way you can see the Wolves taking a step forward without trading Cat? Now, I think this question from Mike is interesting because one of the losses Minnesota had was Kyle Anderson who you have mentioned is, you know, kind of, I think you said, is one of the more underrated losses of the offseason. Plug and play. Plug I mean, and play. He's, just a good, he's a good player to have on any team. Exactly. And I think for Minnesota, it's about those young guys. You know, last year, you know, Wolves fans busted on me because I was saying, you know, trade Cat, you know, make space for Leonard Miller. <laughs> but I do think Leonard Miller... And then their incoming rookies, Terrence Shannon and Rob Dillingham. To me, it's not about the move. The move has already been made. The draft pick last year, the draft picks this year. It's about those young guys continuing to ascend and, and, and outperforming the fact that they're first, second year players, in addition to Ant making a leap. But I think with Kyle Anderson going, uh, leaving, you need Leonard Miller or Terrence Shannon or, and or Rob Dillingham to be something. I... Agree with you. I do not look at this as a transaction team. I don't look at this going, they need to get better and they need to move Cat in order to get better. I'd run it back. I'd run it back with their team. You know, you get these two years with the second apron before the penalties are going to be kicking in. And so most of these teams have two-year windows. You're going to get internal improvement with Edward. He's going to be one of the best players in the entire NBA. It's a whole nother round. You know, they really lost on the whole that was their first time to really get to run through with having both Towns and Gobert because they lost that first season of having Towns and Gobert together because Towns was out the whole time. And so you don't have as many games as you would think. And, you know, they they were top seed last year by getting to do that. They were a top seed by getting to run that team. And so I would say, look, you've got most of the major components. I loved the two draft picks that they are at. And I actually think those guys could be helpful and play. And so I don't think I'd be looking at it right now going, Hey, I need to improve. I think you're counting on the internal improvement and improvement comes from going through what they went through these last couple of years. You know, we always talk about playoff scars that teams don't win immediately. And I think for them, for Oklahoma City, for others, you are going to see that it's going to reap real benefits that they've been in those positions. And they just pulled off beating the behemoth in Denver last year uh, before falling short. And by the way, they demolished Phoenix, demolished it. So I don't look at it. I go, man, Anthony Edwards isn't going to get anything but better going forward and that's your best guy and now you've put him in even more high pressure situations and you've added a couple other good players that are young players i i I would be i would put the whole we need to make a trade way to the side i don't think this is a transaction team i think this is an internal improvement team and i think you're going to be in the mix with a chance to win the western conference i agree that from patrick he says, I've been tracking an insane stat for Pelicans forward Trey Murphy the past two seasons. The past two regular seasons and games in which Trey Murphy is active, when Trey Murphy attempts eight or more threes, the Pelicans are 44-9. and nine. When Trey Murphy attempts seven or fewer threes, the Pelicans are 27-52. and 52. Patrick says, it seems pretty clear that his involvement in the offense directly leads to winning but Willie Green loves Brandon Ingram too much to bench him for Trey. My question for you is... You're not going to have to worry about that. (laughs) Well, Ingram has yet to be traded. Should the Pelicans just try to dump Ingram at this point, even if they have to attach an asset or take back a bad contract? I think the answer is no to that. You don't want to just dump him for nothing. But I do think it's an interesting thought here with Trey Murphy because he 
is a really good player, and it took a long time for Willie Green to start feeding him more threes. So what do you think that they should do with Ingram? Should it should it be an urgent thing for them to get rid of Ingram, in part because of Trey Murphy? Yes. I agree. I've I never so liked too. the Ingram-Zion mix anyway. I like the Murphy-Zion mix because, again, whenever you've got great players, you want guys being able to create space for those great players. And Murphy does that. He stretches the floor all the way out to the three-point line. And this is something that Ingram doesn't do. By the way, he could not score on Lou Alding. He couldn't do anything <laughs> when he was left to his own devices in the playoffs. Say whatever you want about it. He just couldn't. And that mix, you can't do anything with McCollum. And that mix with McCollum. And, and now you're adding DeJounte Murray into the mix, right? It's not it's a fit. Too, it's too many it's too ball much. handlers. Too, ma- too many. The, the roster, I mean, like, I think I think for New Orleans, th- th- there's some logic to keeping Ingram into the season. There's even some logic to extending him at a, at a fair amount because that could increase his value in the same way we're talking about Jared Allen. He gets re-signed, it could increase his value. Resign Lowry Markkinen in Utah, it could increase his value. Resign Vernon Ingram for $20, $25 million, that could increase his value. But for the Pelicans, it's another year uh, with Zion Williamson where you want to try to optimize him and make the most of the situation that you have. If you have Zion and Ingram and McCollum and DeJounte Murray all in the starting lineup, I don't think that roster makes a lot of sense. You get to remove one of those ball handlers or even two of them. That's what gives space for Herb Jones, for Trey Murphy. And some of these other guys, you hope Jordan Hawkins gets better in his second year. Guys like that that are kind of these fillers and amplifiers yep. around your star players. That balance just makes way more sense than what the current, you know, starting four of the five looks like right now. It's Not always look, it's stars and role players. And you're trying to, like you said, amplify. We're even watching that, Kev, in Team USA. Look how amazing Derek White has been for That's them. why they got him. That's why they chose him. They need role players. It's pretty clear why they got him, right? For sure. Yeah. For sure. But you need guys like that. You need guys that are going to keep the ball moving and play a role. When you're yep. even at the highest level on a Team USA, there's still got to be role guys. Oh, 100%. Right? And it's like, he's not a role player. How many, like, none of those guys are role players. None of them. No. no. And so it's like, okay, here's the easiest thing to do. So, yes. I would move off of Brandon Ingram and make room for more Trey Murphy. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing how that resolves very yep. much because they still have some picks to play with too. I mean, if they wanted to trade up and attach him with picks, they definitely could do that. But not how much money he, did Lou Alden cost him? Oh my god! <laughs> Seriously, just being one inch from his face the entire not, not, not Lou Alden. <laughs> Oh, Lou Dang. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did I say? Lou Gwynn's Dort. I keep saying Dang. Yeah, I had Dang in my, I had dang in my I head because I, of the I, 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 just want, I just let, I let it go Dort. the first time because people know what you mean. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dort. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lou Dort. Lou, Lou All. Lou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's understandable. But no, same way. Yeah. Dort yep. just cost him yep. $100 million. Yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, qu- question from Omar. I have a hypothetical question from San Diego. You know, beautiful San Diego. He says... If you were an NBA player, Chris and Kevin, which career path would you choose? One, all-star, made a ton of money, great stats, but never won a championship and you were a journeyman, no attachment to any organization. Or two, be a well-known role player, a seventh or eighth guy off the bench. You're never an all-star, low averages with minutes and scoring, but you're a great locker room guy, a vibes guy. You played for your favorite team. You made made... 30% 30% less than the all-star, but you win five rings and you're a fan favorite. Which career path would you choose? I made 30% less? Thir- no, 30, 30% of what the all-star made. Oh, so, 30%. So, so 70% yeah. less? Yeah. So, so if the all-star made 100 million, you made 30 million. Man, I wish there was a, I, I mean, obviously the quick answer is, I, is there something in between? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know I mean, mean, so here, here's the thing. The, the, I, I, the, certainly, the I certainly want to win. But if the All-Star makes $400 million, you made $120 million. And I've got five rings? And you got five rings. So I'm like, and, and you're a fan favorite. And you play in your, in your 
team of your choice for your whole career. To me, I think career two is is where I'd want to go. I mean, so uh, obviously, one hundred twenty million is a hell of like role players make you. a hell of a lot of money. Luke Carr is making eleven million this year. That's right. The money's <laughs> not the same, but obviously, it's like, would you rather be your guy James Harden or like Robert Ory? Yeah, exactly. Would you Would you rather have a a private jet or still fly first class with your whole family? No question, no worries for the rest of your life. I, I think first class, I'd be happy just doing that. I wouldn't need a private jet. <laughs> It's okay. It'd be nice to have, but I don't need one. I'd go too, without a question. You'd rather have the titles. Yeah. I th- I think there's something lasting and fulfilling about that rather than being a, a player who bounces organization to organization. And even though you're an all-star, a great player, maybe even make the Hall of Fame, right? Like Because we're maybe. still assuming you have generational money, right? There's a limit to the money and the accolades that are going to fulfill you. Going sure. I mean, I mean let's, just, let's just like pull up an actual real It is certainly here. more fulfilling to have that level of success in what you did. Yes, exactly. Right? But, but now Jay, it's just but a matter just, of do you the, view it as individual success is absolutely. greater than team success? Yes. Well, the, the example he gave, Omar gave, was James Harden. He has $340 million in career earnings. 30% okay. of that is $102 million. I mean, I'd be okay with 102 million. Come I on. would too, even after taxes. <laughs> and I'm winning, and I and I've got you're you saying you didn't say like a title, five. You said titles. five titles. Yeah, okay. Five I, want, I want the five titles. Yeah, I, I want the five titles too. I mean, you're okay. if you've got five titles, you're also, by the way, in a class of player that is, I mean, much much different than your peers oh, over the last 80 years. For sure. Your, your, your name is way up those yeah. lists forever about most most championships ever. And what you can parlay that into post-career. Absolutely. You could, you could be You could be a local TV announcer. You could, you could, you could do a, a whole bunch of stuff. Of you sign could coach sign them. Sign autographs and get paid for that. If, How it's about, about this? making money. <laughs> hey, Kev, you could coach the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. And Team USA. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, we, we didn't get into the post-playing career stuff. I just think that that path would be so much more fulfilling. I think I agree as long as we're talking 100 million. Yeah. What if it's 50 million? I'm thinking harder. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I still want the hunter, bro. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you could do anything with a hundred million dollars. Anything, I know. Anything. Yeah. You know, they always say there's like F you money and F everybody money. That's yeah. F everybody <laughs> money. Maybe I not. Know, uh, maybe not yeah. everybody, but yeah. you know, most people. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 